All right, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a weekend. It is Saturday, December 6, 2025, 1240 p.m. California time here, where the uh, latest earthquake comes in there is a 0 0.9, not a 9 magnitude, but a 0 0.9 there across California, it looks like, uh, outside the Ridgecrest area there in the uh, little red circle. Uh, watching some movement up here across the uh, southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Yesterday and last night here we had a little swarm of activity. Uh, the largest so far a 3.4, but there's also another earthquake here this morning with a 2.7. Again, this is the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. And uh, basically what's going on here is some further stress and strain here because of the slow slip events that are occurring in this area. Now, these are tremors, not volcanic tremor, but a slow slip event uh, that's being detected there by some very sensitive equipment, by the way. This is a sign that the Juan de Fuca plate, the southern end, uh, is further um, subducting underneath this area. This is a slow slip event, basically where two plates slowly slip past one another. It's not a sudden release of pressure, not a sudden release like an earthquake, but further um, sliding past one another down into the deeper area of the Cascadia subduction zone. Now upstream here, let me show you guys a, a little image here. Try to um, express it there by words, but sometimes a, a, a visual here works a little bit better. So the slow slip events occur underneath this area. This is a cross section of Washington, but it goes for Oregon and Northern California as well because the Cascadia extends down there to Northern California. So here's the subducting plate, right? Going deeper, deeper down into the mantle. Of course, you get the volcanoes there in the Cascades as it gets into the heated area, right? It melts and it creates those volcanoes. Now, the tremor activity is occurring roughly right about here, down below the locked area. The locked area in the red, that is where the stress and strain is building. Now, uh, those, those uh, earthquakes that occur out there on the uh, Cascadia can get big. We can see a partial rupture there up to about 8.4, or we can see a full length rupture of the Cascadia resulting in a 9.0 or greater magnitude out there. The slow slip events, look where they're at right underneath this area and that is resulting in stress quakes out there up towards the locked area of the Cascadia subduction zone. Um, someone on my last post here said, oh, uh, quit lying. You're lying. <laughs> How, what am I lying about? Come on. Hello. I'm, I'm, this is legit information, you know. You know, we had one false earthquake over there a couple days ago, 5.9. Now every earthquake I post uh, they think it's a false quake, but it's not. We're getting some stress out here across the southern end of the Cascadia because of further uh, subducting of that Juan de Fuca plate. So you got to watch that. Uh, that uh, does have some potential out here. Uh, the oceanic crust map shows us where the uh, subduct uh, subduction interface is, where it begins. And that's right here on the line, the plate boundary. Uh, this is actually the Gorda plate. There's, technically, they call it the Juan de Fuca plate here, but there's three separate micro, three connected micro plates. It's the Gorda plate that's further subducting underneath this area of the southern end, and we get partial ruptures in between big events. Um, you know, up to at 8.4 or so, and they normally happen in between major ruptures, and we haven't had one yet, uh, which is a little odd. Um, we could see that, or we could potentially see a full rupture out here. The thing is, 325 years ago was the last big earthquake, and stress and strain, it's building up. And when you get that tremor activity showing up there, like we did yesterday, resulting in further stress earthquakes out here, these are not microquakes. These are actually some decent uh, events there, above 2.5. Um, you know, it's got uh, got a wonder maybe we're starting to see some telltale signs here of this thing getting ready to pop either way be on guard hopefully everyone got a chance to read that uh, website last night i sent called uh, survivingcascadia.com it's got so much information on it uh, a wealth of information when it comes to what ifs what do i do uh, and what not there across the cascadia subduction zone so check that out survivingcascadia.com uh, up in Washington, a handful of smaller quakes. Nothing big going on there today. Uh, aside from the Northern California Cascadia subduction zone uh, earthquake. Uh, I just got an earthquake notification here. 
of a let's see what we got. Ooh, wow. 6.7 earthquake. Big earthquake coming in here. Up into Alaska right now. 6.7. Hello. That is a big one. Into the Gulf of Alaska. Remember I said to watch this area? Wow. Okay. I, I do see it showing up there on the Alaska station. That's a pretty big earthquake. Let me let Missy Mimi's know. I did get her uh, notification here. All right, so yeah, we got a big earthquake coming in to the uh, Gulf of Alaska. Does look like it's up there around the Yukon area, uh, e or west of Whitehorse here. That uh, man, that's a pretty big earthquake here. I'm been watching this region here along the Aleutian Trench. Uh, that still may pop here, but let's see what we got here. Uh, three miles deep, so that is going to be a pretty significantly felt earthquake. Uh, let's check out some of these magnitudes here that are being spit out. We only have four stations coming in. Now, you know, how do we know this is not a false earthquake? Well, like I did there with a the 5.9 outside of Reno, I go to the graphs and I observe. If there's no sign of a big earthquake, then it's probably a false alarm. But look what we have here. That's a, uh, that's a seismograph destroyer right there, completely squashing that, uh, the amplitude. And this is actually over around Glacier Island. Alaska, so it's a long, a little ways away from uh, the uh, epicenter of this 6.7. Uh, let's see what we got for any tsunami statement here. It's still underneath automatic status, so um, let me go back to the magnitudes and see what these folks are reporting. Uh, geez, interesting here. Magnitude 6.5, 6.6, 6.6, 6.9, .6, and there's only four stations here reporting. Uh, so, so not a whole lot of information to work with when it comes to this earthquake, but definitely up in the upper six range. I mean, uh, let me go back here. Did not mean to click that one. Uh, could get revised. Could get revised to something bigger. Um, we'll have to watch that. And um, man, I'm just getting bombarded here with phone calls and text messages. What's going on here? Uh, I want to see if this is showing up on other stations here in Northern California because that will determine on if this is going to be a bigger than the 6.7 magnitude. But either way, that's a pretty big one. Uh, U.S. Tsunami Warning Center shows nothing yet. So this earthquake, very new, just coming in. Um, we'll wait here for a minute to see what the uh, confirmed magnitude is. And, uh, and then we'll go from there. But I'm sure, I am most definitely sure that uh, quite a few folks felt this earthquake out there. Uh, it does look like, like some folks there in Anchorage starting to feel it. Um, the intensity model map out here, of course, is going to go by uh, what uh, people are reporting. Let me see here. Yeah, it's like I said, just coming in. Populated area nearby. Uh, let's see what we got as far as the closest area. It looks like Haynes Junction over here. I don't know how big this area is, but it uh, looks like a, just a little town up there. And then you got uh, Whitehorse over here in the Yukon area. That looks like it's a little bit bigger. Not a huge town, but... Um, yeah, kind of uh, northwest of Juneau, 50, 100 miles or so, a little bit more than 100 miles. Oh, I'm sure they felt it, uh, but fortunately, not a lot of large population out here, at least I can, from what I can see on the map. 6.8 just got upgraded there to 6.8, so uh, let's see. Has it been reviewed? It has not been reviewed. Still underneath automatic status. So what's going on with the adjustment there is that the computers are starting to get more magnitudes uh, into the equation. And see, as you can see there, it's, whoa, some of these are reporting this as a seven-pointer, low-grade seven-pointer. Um, showing up on Petrolia, Northern California, also down there in Southern California. And to picking that up as well. So this could get upgraded here to a 7. A lot of these are reporting mid to maybe even upper 7s out here. 
Here's the magnitudes over here on this side. Uh, largest one right there, 7.6. See what the computer does here. The seismograph station spit out a number. There's another 7.6, and they you know average it out in terms of size, uh, location, and whatnot of the reading. But this is going to go in the 7 range, I think. I do think we'll see this uh, revised up into the 7 magnitude. Another aftershock coming in there as well, immediately following that uh, large quake, 4.8. Um, there is finally a tsunami statement here. Let's see what we got. Uh, right now, see these guys reporting that as a 7-pointer, so wow. Um, let's check something here real quick. Definitely uh, no tsunami uh, statement here. Looks uh, like there's no tsunami danger here for anywhere, uh, even the uh, immediate area of Alaska. So that's uh, good news there. But, man, that uh, this earthquake inland like that further uh, makes me think that we're going to see fur uh, further larger activity out here across the Gulf of Alaska into the subduction zone. This happened well inland. Um, right off the plate boundary, though, there is a you know a portion of the subduction zone that extends down here, but this is relatively shallow. So between the eight pointer that we had here a couple years years ago, excuse me, and then the more recent seven point three over here, and now and now the six point eight, well, it's going to get upgraded to a seven pointer. That puts this region right here in a prime zone for some larger activity. It's been quite a while since we've seen. Uh, mega quake out here and that's very possible let me uh refresh this yeah these guys still sticking with the 6.8 um automatic status you know it's one of those things here where uh, it, who's right who's wrong is uh the usgs right or the tsunami warning center or uh you know who's who's right here either way a big earthquake definitely uh wow that's a big one Look at the seismograph stations there. Southern California picking up that significantly as well. Northern California. I'm just looking on here, seeing who else may have picked it up far away. This is Anza, so that's definitely in Southern California. So we'll, uh, we'll watch this. There's the uh, upgraded aftershock there to 5.6 right now. That's a pretty significant event. So I'm going to uh, get this update video on the channel here real quick, and I will be just off on the side um, uploading and getting the thumbnail ready, but I will be here on the microphone. So i got to get this information out there, 6.8. Uh, again, I think they may, uh, they may revise it to a 7-pointer. Most likely they will because it has not been reviewed yet. Still underneath automatic status, so... Uh, we're going to shoot with the seven pointer because of the, um, well, for one, the tsunami warning center is issuing that, but there's no tsunami with this earthquake. So that's good.